All right, listen up. You are using untested weapons against an enemy that, to this point, has been unstoppable. So you are heading into unknown territory. And hear me when I say you're going to see things you will not understand. Our enemy has spread through the city in a matter of days. There's no telling how far they will spread unless we fight back. Most men never even come close to changing the future. This is the place. And now is the time. Make no mistake, you're the last line of defense. Let's go do what we came here to do. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. And hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. This is episode 154, right? Yeah, 154. 154. And tonight we're talking about Spectral, Netflix's uh, original movie, Spectral. I am Sean Arad, and joining me tonight is Corny, um, not one, but two inspirational speeches, Logan. <laughs> because when one's not enough. Yeah. That's right. we got to have at least two. And Sam, 3D printing ghosts, Vector. So when you're driving the helicopter over the Mexico City square, I would so push you out. <laughs> Mexico City? Yeah. Um, okay, sure. I guess Eastern Europe looks like Mexico. Why not? Um, uh, well, it's good to know that you'd push me out. I appreciate that. Um, no Andrew tonight. Um, no. He has got the flu. Um, he... Like everybody else I know, yeah. apparently this is nasty this year. Yeah. So he so got... He, feel he's... better, Andrew. Yeah, he got himself the flu and... He, he got hit well under one of them spectral ghosts. Mm. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, he got hit punched right in the face and... All of his innards are frozen, and that's it. Um, yeah. That's what happened to Chad. No, I'm just teasing. Um, <laughs> got his soul. Yep. Oh, <laughs> it was in stereo. It was perfect. Oh, I gotta, I gotta capture that out. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is 2000 and somethings. Um, 16s, I guess. 2015 Spectral it's on Netflix. And it uh, now this one didn't do as as well as the uh, the first one, right? Or the the last one. What do you mean the well, last it, one? One the first one uh, was it. One or two ago, it was nominated for an Oscar. What are you talking about? Oh, wait. The Skyfall. Oh, Sky. Well, I don't think Skyfall was actually nominated for any Oscars. But I see the joke you're going for. Sorry, it took me a minute to figure out what you're doing. Um, I'm pretty sure Skyfall was nominated for an Oscar. Uh, what Oscar? Like Best Picture. Wasn't no, it? no. No, no yeah, James Bond movie. S- Skyfall? Skyfall. You are on crack. I am going to check it out. I'm, I'm doing, doing it right it now. Uh, let's see. It won two Oscars. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, best sound editing. Yep. And yeah. um, original song by for Adele and sound editing. It was nominated for cinematography, sound mixing, and music written for original score. Oh. Well, and if really, really, really small print. It does say best picture right there. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you just you need a better computer screen to uh, to blow it up, and um, and you can see that. Okay, right, right there. Sure, yeah. if you say so, Sam. Yeah. It's fine. Welcome back, by the way. Welcome back. Oh, you're welcome. Um, you're welcome. I had a good time last week at my conference. Oh, good. I couldn't remember what you were doing. I honestly forgot what you were doing. So. I just assumed he was just like after this, I'm out. I, <laughs> I I I dropped the mic. And, and left the room. As long as you didn't break your mic, yeah. that would suck. Um, I figured that uh, I gave all that I could to the uh, Interstellar movie. And, oh, you um, need a you need a week off to recuperate after getting your ass kicked. No, I believe I'm still right. Oh, well, Bill Nye, the science guy, would argue 
against that. That's all I would say. Has he told you that? Have you? Did you run into him somewhere? No, I haven't run into him. That would be cool. I'd love to meet Bill Nye or uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'd love to meet. I'd those love to guys. take them out drinking. No kidding. How much fun would it be to take those two out drinking? I don't think they'd get drunk. I think they would just science the shit out of hang or uh, yeah. Uh, anti, uh, I I think they oh, no. I think it I would still haven't... be a lot of fun even if, even if they weren't drunk. It would just be like a couple beers and just like all right, guys, explain the universe because I'm confused as hell. And then they would just. <laughs> Just go off, and it would be fantastic. But unfortunately, they are not in Spectral. Um, again, Netflix's original Spectral. Uh, this was a listener-requested movie by uh, my mm. brother-in-law, JP, who's been on the show before. I can't hear you guys. I don't know. How, I don't know what's going on. Really? Can't, you can't hear us? At all? Well, I guess <laughs> if we're asking him, he won't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, He somehow muted us. You Okay. <laughs> Should I so, pause the show? Um, listeners. I'm gonna pause uh, I'm gonna pause the show. Okay, we're back. That was weird. Um but Corny's Cor- back. Corny's back. <laughs> um just when he thought he was gone, we pull we him We pull back. him back in, that's right. Um because you, know, you can't keep a good robot down or something. You know, people keep asking if I think I'm back. Well, you know what? I'm thinking I'm back. I'm thinking I'm back. That was on sci fi channel last night. So after I got finished watching this movie, I turned it on to watch him going into the um, the bar to wreak havoc there. And I was like, hey, look, there, it's John Wick. And she just rolled her eyes. So anyway, um, no, it's not John Wick. Is this movie Spectral. Well, what is Spectral if you don't know what it is? Unfortunately, Andrew's not here, so you're stuck with me. So Spectral is a sci-fi thriller story centered on a special ops team that is dispatched to fight supernatural beings. No, right. I really miss Andrew. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bad enough, I gotta host this show. Now I gotta read. Oh man. Yeah, I know. Stupid effing book. <laughs> yeah. Aw. <laughs> I don't have that nearby. Uh, <laughs> Sam, so you did listen last week. You uh yes, you you, I you understand my struggles here, right? <laughs> um uh, More than least. most, probably. Yeah, that's actually fair, because you've known me a long time. Um, see, dang it, Corny. Stupid <laughs> book. There we go. Apparently, I have the <laughs> unedited version. Um, or the unshortened version. Uh, anyway, there it is. I only have like 38 windows open on my computer right now. So, Spectral nice. 2016. But it's a Mac, and it can handle it it can i just it's almost overwhelming for me um yeah. it's like sensory overload i have my script page the imdb page the google hangout page uh my music clip page and then itunes all happening at once so your processor uh, loving you i i guess i don't know um um that's fine so i know none of us had seen this movie before we watched it for this um, so yeah. we will, uh, we will just kind of do our initial thoughts on the movie and what we thought and we'll go from there. So Corny, you will, uh, you lead off tonight. Um, <laughs> okay. So uh, there, there's nothing, there was nothing to, uh, base my thought process off of, uh, the, the, the initial, um, um, what do you call it? The, uh poster uh the, the the image they used to for the movie mm-hmm. the suit a uh, guy in the suit that looked pretty badass so i was like all right cool and uh this movie turned out to be not those things at all <laughs> um, this is everything that i didn't want it to be um for a really long ass time like this i don't know i'm um uh, a little upset uh at the natural progression of what the hell is this i think <laughs> we figured it out <laughs> and then any rules that were kind of there just stopped being rules. And um, uh, mm. yeah, you can't hit a ghost with a bullet, but you can hit a ghost with uh, uh, homemade bullets or uh, well, they, it, the rules that make sense. And then I, I just hated my life further. Uh, well, <laughs> that, watch this movie. that was supposedly explained by science, I guess. I don't know. Uh, no, I, I, I even heard the explanation. I was still like, no, it just didn't make sense to me. 
Okay. Well, because yeah. the idea is like, oh, I can't, uh, uh, the, the man-made stuff, I can't handle it. And I, I'm pretty sure that all their clothing wasn't made of just natural cotton. Like, I'm pretty sure that's not a thing. I'm confused, so, I'm confused so my, my, now what you're confused about now. All right, so, you know, they're explaining how the thing can't go through. Well, I guess we'll get into that. But uh, my initial thoughts are uh, this movie was pretty bland. Um, I did not get the the payoffs that I thought I would get. Um, I kind of thought the – anyway, I guess we'll get into that further because okay. I don't want to go and do no, that. No, that's fine. <laughs> Pretty bland. Um, not not impressed. Not okay. Impressed. All right. That's fine. Sam, I had the most fun that I've ever had watching a cutscene for Call of Duty than I had in this movie. <laughs> <That's>... Nice. <laughs> I'm not the only one that thought that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally agree with Corny. Um, of course, this is my first time seeing it, and uh, it's a bland movie. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. It's got some pretty interesting visuals i did like some of the last bit of uh the, kind of the last stand um visuals especially with him falling off the platform and everything coming towards it I, that was a beautiful image but it was it, i don't understand quite what happened in this movie and it went from you know they they, they found the the iron chips or the iron things were keeping them away right mm-hmm and then from that, he figured out how to make some sort of plasma gun that could kill him. Well, so it was it was more I, than I just hope, that. Maybe okay. maybe I just missed a, a detail or something when I I don't know <coughs> blacked out from the sheer boredom. <laughs> oh um, man! In the movie, it wasn't no, it, it wasn't boring, but it was it was silly, and but they treated it so darn serious, and I wanted it to be good. Doggone it! You know. I, this is really kind of my first disappointment, disappointing venture in Netflix, Netflix shows. Really? Um, really? Yeah. You, 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 you know, because this, this was supposed to be, you know, a good war movie with the supernatural twist. And, you know, even though the Adam Sandler crap was Adam Sandler crap, at least we knew what we were getting into. Well, we, we thought we were getting a funny movie. Yeah. But I just, this was not. Well, Golding. Yeah. Golding. <laughs> This was not the third nipple of, of Netflix. This is <laughs> okay. This is more like the 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 ingrown hair under the arm of Netflix. Um, did not enjoy it. Didn't have fun. Was bored. Couldn't keep my attention, even though it probably should have. Mainly because I've seen a lot of this before, um, and uh, it was hard for me also the main character uh, to see him as not a military guy. Because it seems like everything I've seen him in is that he's been a military guy, mm-hmm. um, so that was kind of strange for me too. So, what do you think, Sean? Well, I find myself in this unique position where I feel like I almost have to defend this movie. I actually really liked it. Um, really? Yeah, I did. I. Um, so what's wrong with you? I don't know. Or <laughs> because Andrew <laughs> sent a message when he said, "Hey, I'm oh, not. I'm not... I know what happened." They're pale and see through, and you know, <laughs> I identified I with the uh, the ghosts. I totally get it now. Yeah, that's fair. I am I am fairly translucent. <laughs> um, if you put a pretty bright uh, flashlight behind me, I can still glow. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like Andrew didn't like it either. Uh, he no, actually he didn't. no. He he said in his score too. So we'll we'll get to okay. that later. But I I liked it. I thought it was I mean entertaining. Um, it held my attention. Um, yes, it's very paint by the numbers. Um, I mean, every military trope you can think of is in this movie. I wrote down a bunch mm-hmm. of them. Um, now, I will say the military guys, for playing military guys, I was convinced that they were special forces. Well, most of those actors are actors that have done it many other times. Like yeah. the uh, redheaded uh, kind of colonel, I think he's what he was, or the major the the guy that oh, didn't yeah, yeah. like him the the doc at all yeah. he he was in a TV show called The Unit he was also in Saving Private Ryan as one of the team guys that you know, fights for the bridge at the end mm-hmm. um, and he's been in a handful of other war movies so like him and I mean there's a bunch of other guys that were that are this this is what they do you know they yeah. do I mean like one of the um, 
one of but the even soldiers. The, even the tactics they were using in the movie was well, yeah, but, pretty spot on. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, because people are expecting now for soldiers to actually act like, or soldiers. yeah, TV soldiers to act like soldiers. I mean, one of the guys was, he was in Battle L.A. and American Sniper. So, I mean, these are character actors who are pretty much, you know, dudes what are going to be in those kind of movies. So Yeah. So, anyway. Oh, Corny. I Yo. totally missed it. We have a freaking leverage connection. Uh Oh, oh wait, wait. Which one was the one about leverage guy? Was it when the ghost attacked the tank? No. No. <laughs> No, uh, Clayne Crawford, who plays, he's playing the new, um, the Lethal Weapons. He's Martin Riggs. He's the, he's the anti, um. Disentablishmentarianism? Uh, no, he's the, he's the other Elliot. Oh, you know what? I, I didn't recognize him. Because he had a yeah, beard. Really yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. I, I was watching the movie thinking, I know that guy from somewhere, and now, I, now we know. Um. And, and you know, no, no, oh, he got it. Nice. So this on, movie come is on, man. pick it up. You you guys both use the word bland. Um, the the one of the one of the words that I would kept that come into mind was, um, I'm going to use the word sepia tone. The whole movie was dark and lots of browns and grays, and that worked in Saving Private Ryan because it's 1945. But this is supposed to be sometime in the future, and everything looked dark and it was hard to see. Um, some things, um, uh, I'll say this, this is by no means uh, a great film. It's not even, I don't even think a good film. I think it's a mediocre film, but mm -hmm. I had way more fun with this than that stupid, ridiculous six movie. Oh, um, and I would rather watch this again than ridiculous six. Now of the three Netflix movies we've done, I would, I would, I think international assassin would probably be my number one. I would agree with that. Uh, I because I I'd like actually, to. I'd actually put uh, that one last. Really? Yeah. Well, so you'd no. say ridiculous six of this one, and then international assassin. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I like me some Kevin James, and I like that movie. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I still don't understand how you can like Kevin James and not uh, Ben Stiller. Because one's funny and one's not. They're the same character. No, they're not. Yes, they are. They're both down on their luck. Uh, losers. Yeah, but Kevin James is he, Kevin James is like Winnie the Pooh, right? He's the funny kind of goofy dude, and Ben Stiller is Eeyore. <laughs> I mean, nobody likes me. I would have come and played, but my tail is stuck over there, and no one will put it back on my butt. You know, it's just. <laughs> No I'm, gonna will... need you to, I'm gonna need you to isolate that next week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not. I just realized <laughs> what I said. Um, <laughs> damn it. Oh, corny. By the way, I nope. now I now have. Um, where is it? I now have this forever. Made the Sparky go boom. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now nice. I have I have Chad. I have some of corny, and now one of me. I still yet to have one of Sam. Made the Sparky go boom. There you go. <laughs> oh man, that was without cold medicine. I wish I was partaking. Um, nice in the butt. Yep. Yeah, so he is in the butt. Our hero was the bad guy from Iron Man three. That was interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so this movie starts off right. We have our our cold open where. The thing's exploring. Yeah, somebody does a thing the, and then he gets the killed, right? Third person shooter is uh you or know, first person well shooter. Yeah. I'm sorry, first person shooter. Yeah. What would the third person be? It'd be the uh, camera be behind him, like um, uh, Game of Thrones, uh, Grand Theft Auto. There you go. Yeah. Second person shooters are really strange. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how that would work. Um, I actually don't know how. To, I actually read a short story. That was written in second person. Is that a dog I hear? Yeah, it's yes. the same dog. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't tell if it was a dog or uh, some phantom uh, looping of <laughs> Sean's... Uh, everyone, is everyone ready? What? <laughs> what? Uh, no. No, that's, that's not me. Um, ah! There you go. So, uh, I have very few clips, like, queued up. Otherwise, they're all hidden away. Um... 
No, so you have the cold. So basically, this is this opens like an episode of uh, NCIS, right? You have a person that has really ultimately nothing to do with the story. He finds the thing or triggers the, the show, right? So then mm-hmm. we then kick over to the other part of the world where these guys are basically creating. He stands there over the body and then slowly puts his sunglasses on and says a funny quirk. Oh no, that's that's CSI Miami. Oh, oh okay, oh. sorry. What? what are you gonna... No. Who are you going to call? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, dude. yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, I hated that show. I hated him so much. He's so bad. He's so bad. All right, can David, can you stand facing the camera ever? No, I can't. No. I always have be to be slightly adjacent. to the side, and I have to slowly put my sunglasses on or off, and I have to have a really bad dialogue. Great, we can make this show for eight seasons. Of course. Um, Dog agrees. Do what? Dog agrees. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Uh, so, and then we go to the other world, side of the world, right, where the scientist is making the... Ooh. <laughs> oh, I guess you can hear that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, scientist is making the basically the weapon from Batman Begins. And then, of course, some... Um, you know, military dick is like, oh, you tried it on people yet? Let's vaporize people, and then we'll create Star Trek phasers. Great. Uh, and then they they send them across to the place, and then this is where the movie really gets started, right? So uh, I'm going to break this down, and we've done this before. We did this with Interstellar. This movie, I think, has three acts to the movie. Uh, and feel free to disagree if you want. Opening it, you have your opening act up until... Up until... That's not a phrase. Up until... You have the first attack, right? The first where they go in, right? So basically this movie is, we don't know what this thing is. We're going to go find out. And then we have like the middle third where basically it turns into a horror flick. It's a survival horror flick. And these things are doing all this crazy ghost stuff. And they don't know what the heck is happening. And then the final third turns into uh, uh, Call of Duty 4 Ghost Black Ops Recon thing. <laughs> I sound like my mom when she's describing games. It's a capture the flag. Uh, a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's a giant CTF mission. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the ending reminded me a little bit of every other war movie ever. We need to create a diversion so that you guys can go in and and kick the warp drive so that the ship can be saved or something. I don't know. So we're all gonna die. It's you know. Yeah. You know. Oh dear God, we're all going to die. So. <laughs> Are you ready for the thing that really pissed me off the most, though, of this movie? Are we are we ready to go there? Absolutely. Yeah. Was it a microphone screeching when someone walked up to it? No, that didn't happen. Sure. There was actually, actually, so I actually did write this thing down. The one thing that pisses Sean off the most. So I actually wrote that as a me? thing. No, no, no. <laughs> well, oh. not in real life. Um, could you guys guess what what movie what thing that what movie trope that this movie do? That I just really hate. Was oh, it the, um, the sole survivor surviving? Mm-mm. No, I'm it's uh, is, it, is it the phrase thing that you hate? Uh, there are some phrases that I hate. Um, now, did it? Did they say the movie title? Did they they might have said Spectre. I don't know, or Spectral. I don't remember. No, um, it's more of even more. Corny should know this one because of who, what his job is, or what his job used to be. Not my job? No. Uh, it's a tech thing, right? Yeah. Does it have to do with putting cameras on tanks? No, I'm actually okay with it. I thought that was kind of cool. No, I just, okay. So when he's getting walked through the base and you saw all these people with these computer monitors with footage and they're typing on the computers. What are you, what are you typing? Nothing. There's video <laughs> footage there. If Maybe they're... they've got a video up while they're just doing some random document but there's, behind But there's it. nothing taught. Well, you would never do that. You would never have full screen video while typing. I mean, I'm kind of doing that now with Google Hangouts. Yeah. You don't have the whole video up. <laughs> um, let me make your face big. And <laughs> yeah, but, now but you're not typing yeah. meaningful things right now either. You're not working on a military base, you know, typing meaningful things. That pisses me off. Yeah. Whatever, fine. You're going to argue with me, I don't care. But the other thing, <laughs> we're going to have to find a solution for that. 
But the other thing, and poor Sam needs to go tranquilize his dog. The other thing that really annoyed me. <laughs> besides this, is um, is the whole movie kind of boils down to the fact that no one has a cell phone. <laughs> yeah, so we're like, yeah, that's, that why don't you? Why does they? Oh, you know what? Why does no one have a sat phone? But yet they're able to call in some sort of support, aren't they? Well, they got shortwave radio, right? Yeah. But I mean, once Bruce Greenwood shows up at the end, he's like, "There are no more reinforcements. This is it." Like, you can't call America with a phone. I mean, there's, is there no landline in that fortress of solitude that you're in? I mean, I, all you need to do is make a phone call to America, and then you can get whatever you need. I mean, they're in Eastern Europe. We have a we have a large military presence in Germany. You could probably get reinforcements within an hour, but it makes the movie more dramatic if they can't, you know, contact the outside world. Well, we can contact them, but anyone within a twenty mile radius will know where we are. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how they could have solved that. You know, could they have sat phone? Well, no, no, no. Like in the in the story, just a side statement saying, you know, there's interference with any outgoing okay communication because of the. You know, and and somehow come up with the answer to these stupid. All of the ghosts. all of the ghosts knock down all of the cell phone towers in a hundred mile radius. Or no, you I know, mean, they're just static. There's just some yeah. sort of interference. That's all they'd have to say. Yeah, it's, yeah I don't know. They could science it. A little. <clears throat> it was, Maybe it's just uh, sightings by uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey just knocking books down. And but then you'd have the two kids on their cell phones playing dir- uh, Dirty Birds, Angry Birds, playing, uh, Angry Birds <laughs> while they're trying to run <laughs> from the ghosts. <laughs> Oh, speaking of <laughs> so let me ask you this. Speaking of the kid, I didn't oh, see that coming. By no the way, no one saw that coming. I couldn't. I believe. totally saw that coming. I you I did? saw it a mile away. I sure did. I wow. I um, thought that the ghost was gonna like go towards the kid and then stop and like leave the kid alone. I did nah, not expect. I thought him. someone was going to distract the ghost and then get killed. Yeah, you like, know, in, in an effort to save the kid. Yeah, like bearded man. Um, guy from, I've got to go save this dog. By All the way, right. All right. before I throw her out a window, <laughs> guy, guy from Leverage, I I figured he would be the one that would. I'll go and try to save the kid. Yeah, and then he's the one that sacrifice does the sacrifice play, and instead, no, little boy dies. Did not see that coming. You said you saw it coming. Yeah, um, I'll tell you how. So, the moment. That uh, he, you know, he's kind of playing around with the kid, and he's, you know, doing the play fighting thing, and mm-hmm. um, uh, and then they, you know, have that moment, and he talks about the monsters, and I was like, he's gonna die. Like I knew instinctively huh. that that guy made a connection, and so he had to die. I figured. I don't know why? I, I actually don't... figured the soldier would die long before the kid, because movies don't kill a kid. You just usually don't. Um, well, this this movie it was already weird, so. I yeah. don't know. Maybe it's just a right combination for me. Well, and I and I think and I and I will wait till Sam to get back as I see him walking back towards his spot, and I will continue to stall until Sam puts his headset back on. Is that I I think part of the problem of the movie, and I'm I'm putting words in your mouth, so tell me if I'm wrong, is that the movie didn't know what it was going to be. And you know, and that's what I meant. Like when you had you had three distinctive different acts. Like okay. if the movie had decided to be, honestly, the final third of the movie, if the movie would have been that from, like the second and third act, I think I think you guys might have liked the movie more. I think I know I would have personally. You what know, the final act? Yeah, if we would have had more of, maybe have them figure out what's going on sooner and then allow this, you know, turn this into video game crap. I don't care. You know, turn it into Halo meets Black Ops, whatever. Like, I liked that stuff. I thought that stuff was great. Honestly, the the Black Hawk Down middle third of the movie, I, I've i already seen that movie. It's called Black Hawk Down, and they did it way better. <laughs> um, only they're being shot by Somali pirates instead of ghosties. So... Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just i I didn't dislike the movie. I just it it it, it was fine. It was fine. Um, uh, Bruce Greenwood, he's great. I think he's really good in this movie, though he's not in it very much, which is fine. Of course, he's our Trek connection. 
Um, Ref Is next, that the, the major major. Yeah, he's the older guy. He was the inspirational okay. speech at the beginning of the show. Okay. Uh, your your president Ellis, your um, guy from Pacific Rim, your it's Forrest Gump. I don't think Forrest Gump ever gave inspirational speeches. Oh, I don't know. I, I kind of felt like. Uh, yeah. No, I, no, you're right. You didn't. I was going to say, life is like a box of chocolates is not an inspirational speech. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's poignant. <laughs> it is, but it's not a speech. It's a phrase. Yeah. It's a it's a cliche. It's a it's a fortune cookie. It's not a yeah. I've been inspired by some fortune cookies. Mm. Speaking of fortune uh, cookies, the guy that uh, has been writing apparently there's been one dude that writes fortune cookies. So there's a there's a company uh, oh, in America that that, does that he have broken English. Well, what <laughs> does he have broken English? I don't know. I mean, he is Asian. He is of Chinese yeah. descent. Okay. He's retiring after 35 years of doing this. Oh no! So let me. So I read this article and it kind of made me mad. We all have you, the three of us, and I know Andrew. We have jobs that we do lots of things all the time. And every day we get it done at the end of the day, and we're like, "Man, I didn't get done. I didn't get to do all the things I wanted to do." And then you start over the next day, right? And this guy, for the last thirty years, has written on average only, I think, twenty fortunes a year. Could you imagine that? Like once every two weeks. Oh, I wrote one. Whew. Man, I'm gonna take two weeks off. That just blows my mind. Oh, I mean, he probably had to think work about hard. Him very hard. You work hard, yeah. you play hard. Is that what it is? Yeah. Maybe he just writes the twentieth, you know, in February, and then he takes the rest of the year off. That's actually a nice job. I like that job. Um, pretty powerful landmines. What? Oh, wait, that's too too soon. Uh, hold on. Uh, roughnecks don't like the tech guy that makes their gear to save them. That was kind of a cliche trope. Although whatever. technically, he was taking their gear and, um destroying what it was supposed to be used for. No, it's the beginning of the movie. I'm talking about the beginning. Yeah. Like, they're like, oh, we don't like you tech people. And then even the captain was like, this is the guy that's literally trying to save your lives. So, yeah, be nice. And then he died. Um, Not sure where Netflix got those big trucks, but they were cool. I like those <clears> trucks. <throat> um, And they're real. Those trucks are obviously real. But, I mean, like, they're some type of military truck. Uh, I didn't get really why they wore the goggles during the day. I feel like that would be hard to, sh to, to you know, like, you don't really well, get is, your... Wasn't it supposed to be a hyper real or, you know, I don't know. I figured the goggles were there to just, well, kind of like what we do when we're in Halo 2. Yeah, but Halo I mean, 3, we, you know, we can... you could see more with certain goggles or something I yeah don't know. I, I don't know either i mean they obviously were using them and you know we have our soldiers now will use especially night vision right because you're looking through a scope on your helmet and you have to turn your head if you want to look you know left and right but i don't know it's fine whatever if you don't do it during the day then you don't get to see the ghosties um pretty powerful landmines to flip the big trucks uh, mm -hmm. sh uh feel bad for the guys that were shooting bullets at the ghost clearly I mean, if honestly, if the bullets would have been made of st iron, it would have hurt the ghosts, right? But uh, that's what I thought. Stop! I, why is it iron and not uh, lead? Um, because of the boson Hicks condensate. That's <laughs> the hell did you just say? That's what they're. That's what they're, I, think, I think he just had a, has a stroke. I smell toast. Boson. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice. Oh, that's great. Apparently, Higgs, the Higgs boson. Yeah. Uh, it's a thing that... The Higgs boson, isn't that a very, very small particle? Yeah. Actually, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah it's uh, an elementary particle in the standard model of particle physics. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Basically, that's what they were talking about in this movie, is that they found a way to weaponize it mm -hmm. and... Condensate. Yeah. They were able to hit the condensate. Yeah. Which is a made up word. Condensate? Well, all words are made up. Yeah. So says you. <laughs> yeah, because I just I made up words all the time. Condensate. <clears throat> uh search. 
I'm looking for the word condensate. Sorry, con- uh, like condensation? Yeah. I don't know if that's actual verb. Well, no, I mean, condensate isn't a... Uh, 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 uh. The top quark condensate. No, it is a word. A liquid formed uh, by condensation. Very. Oh, it is condensate, yeah. There it is. Webster's. Um... So anyway, I don't really want to get into this because, frankly, I don't care. But it's they talked about, oh, the Bose-Einstein condensation is a state of matter of diluted gas of bosons cooled to temperature very close to absolute zero. Which this is why would, they were freezing things. That, so they actually tried to do a little bit of a... Yeah, they did a little bit of a little... They did, a, they did a Wikipedia search like I did. Yeah. Uh, that is very near 0K or negative 273.15 Celsius. So they were they were angry because they were cold. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah. This state was predicted generally in 1924 by somebody, Bose and Albert Einstein. Did anybody else have a weird? I don't know. I felt a little sorry for the ghosts. Uh, kinda. Because weren't they just prisoners that they took their souls or something, and they looked awfully sad. Yeah, they were. And they, then they looked really angry. Yeah, they were. Well, I mean, yeah, they were. They were made to be weapons, and then were imprinted. I mean, they're basically they took human emotions and imprinted it on this physical thing and turned them into ghost zombie things, whatever. So, but was you know where you saw the brains and then the neural mm-hmm. networks? Those were people, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what that's what they're doing. They're taking emotions from people, and that's how they're kind of imprinting the mm-hmm. the so it can think and react and reason and fear. I mean, you saw one of the ghosts punch the tank and not go through it. He looked at his hand like, "Wait, I didn't I didn't go through this thing." So and then he beat the hell out of that tank, which was kind of a cool scene. I mean, honestly, the CGI work in this movie I thought was pretty good. I thought for the, yeah, for what it was, it wasn't a major theatrical release. Yeah, and I have no idea what the budget is. It doesn't say. they don't. Netflix doesn't post that stuff. I would say um, it would be pretty expensive at for least, what they did. At least eight twenty five a person. I mean, uh, I imagine, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, $30, $40 million <laughs> movie. I mean, I can see that. I mean, yeah. most of your actors in this movie are TV guys. I mean, your yeah. your main hero was a bad guy in Iron Man 3. I mean, your your big name actor Bruce Greenwood's in the movie for five minutes. So, uh, and the director Nick Matthew, this is the only thing he has ever done. Um, and the and the reason CGI was cheap is because it. I mean, it's pretty much the same kind of CGI you'd get in any video game, like we were saying before, a uh, video game um, cutscene. You're not so wrong. It's, yeah. it's not like it's brand new ways of doing cgi oh no yeah no this was not groundbreaking yeah this is not the next step of you know this is not the avatar but it, we didn't expect it to be i mean no. it was a netflix original um i did however i liked when the, when the ghosts flew around the, the spiny looking things mm-hmm. i thought that was pretty cool yeah no you're right i mean again the the the, the visuals of the movie were good when you could see it it just was too dark so gray um, I liked the big guns that they made. I thought they were kind of cool. And uh, honestly, when they flew in that, that I guess it's like a the loader thing that looked like the, the what's it called? Like they use it in Black Ops Two, Corny. You know what I'm talking about? The thing that the little animal looking. Yeah, machine? it would stand up and run with them. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When they put the 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 sensor thing on that, and that thing started running with the team, like I was in at that point. I'm like, finally, here's the payoff. And and then <laughs> when uh, uh, Major Gin- uh, Ginger um, built that sniper rifle, like the world's largest sniper rifle, and like oh, Lord, built all yeah. those things together, I thought that was really cool. And he shot that thing, and it was like a howitzer, and he flew back. And, like, that stuff worked for me. That's all third act, though. I know. That's the problem, is that... <laughs> um, although although you're supposed to have the big payoffs in the third act. You know, you're right. I mean, right, but... Um, I just thought I thought they were going to do a lot more with the iron shavings. I, I just... I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of I thought they would weaponize it a little better than what they yeah. had. Yeah. I, like I, actually, oh, basically, take your bullets, um, 
and start dumping those things into the bullets or something to just yeah i'm not sure how that would off. i'm not sure how that would work um with a bullet but i uh, could, maybe take the bullet uh roll it in the stuff bake it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> bark it with a b put it in the oven for there uh, you go for yeah. corny and me um no, I don't know. I mean, I, I, the 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 only really part about the the weaponizing of the iron shavings that I thought was clever. It was when uh, the doc was mourning the loss of the boy, and the helicopter was there, and he saw that the ghosts were having a hard time, and Heck he took yeah. off his whole ammo belt and smashed it in the ground, and all of the shavings, like it was like a like a cluster bomb. I thought that was clever. Yeah. Um, I, I will say this about the doc. Um, yeah, he he basically is a combination of MacGyver and uh, Matt Damon from The Martian, because um, he literally scienced the shit out of this movie. Yeah, and I, and I he literally just looked things like, huh? I'm gonna take that apart, and make it again. Yeah, but he no, starts you... doing that with other things around the uh, the little place they are. Dude, that's my Walkman. No, 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 I got <laughs> my Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's vintage. Yeah. Hands off my record player, man. Yeah, it's vintage. Well, it is Eastern Europe. Who knows? He starts walking up to other people with other shit. Like, they didn't even belong to the whole situation. Some kid's playing a DS. He's like, no. He's like, no, no, it's fine, kid. I need this. It'll be a great weapon. Stop, also, stop some guy with, with a pacemaker is like, hey, man, I'm going to have to uh, cut <laughs> I need you need to remove that. I need the battery from your pacemaker. And that guy's leg. And that guy's leg. <laughs> and that guy's leg. <laughs> All right, I got the leg. What do you need for it? Nothing, man. I just Dude, this... you really got the leg? I can't believe you did that. That was such a great scene from that movie. Oh, I can't wait till the second. We're talking about uh, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. We need that I'll guy's eye. Weekend. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> um, which is a way better movie than this. Yes. Um, no, I, so here's the other thing that I thought was confusing. So at the end, when they're gearing up, right, they've got the new guns that they made, and I mean, and he, I mean, in a in a castle in Eastern Europe, he advanced technology like ten years. Yeah. I mean, forget them going to find out how to make more ghosts. The guns that he made, are you kidding me? Those things were fantastic. I mean, like just the sight optics that he made are better than anything the military has now. Mm-hmm. And but my question is: is the suits that they made? I was the. I it looked like they were wearing, like cold suits, so that they were trying to protect their themselves from maybe indirect contact with them, so that they wouldn't get immediately frozen. I don't know, you know, because they found out that they couldn't get through ceramics, right? Mm-hmm. So I thought it was maybe some some body armor ceramic. Body armor, like some kind of Kevlar, yeah, 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 with like ceramic Kevlar. I, I mean, I guess that's the thing. I don't know. Which would have been awesome if, like, you punched a ghost in the face with that, right? I wonder if, I wonder if it, you know, see that would have been cool to see. Yeah, have like have like a have an Iron Man <laughs> and he <laughs> punch or one ceramic man. All right, so uh, ceramic man sounds way less cool, <laughs> dude. So when he was talking about, oh yeah, the ceramics, they can't go through ceramics, and my immediate thought was. <laughs> da, 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 as he's you know like chiseling the ceramic suit. <laughs> oh yeah, he, you know he he gets some clay pots right, and you know stacks he's like them. he's like breaking down <laughs> toilets and I guess that's porcelain, but whatever. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it's fine. <laughs> I like this idea of seeing Robert Downey Jr. in a cave, you know, trying to like fire up a uh, like porcelain. A kiln. A kiln so he can make a porcelain. <laughs> you can't articulate anything, but you're, but you're safe from the ghosts. He has, like, no movement because, you know, <laughs> no joints. <laughs> I like this Or actually, idea. what he just makes is a giant toilet with some he wheels. Just, actually, he go. just takes the bathtub, right, the, cat, the, the porcelain bathtub, and just puts it on his back like a ninja turtle, and then when danger <laughs> happens, he just <laughs> drops down to the ground. I like this idea. Um... What what other my notes do I have? Uh, bomb making montage. Oh, uh, montage. Montage. Uh, I was gonna actually ask about that because oh, there it is. Now you can ask after the clip. Sorry. I was actually kind of uh, wary as to if that would actually be a montage or not, um, because it was the same action, just 
I, I, I guess I, it's over I thought and over it was. Again. I mean, it was like one guy here, he puts the stuff in, then the guy over there with the glass and the thing, and the other guy takes the grenade apart, and he's all sweaty and scared because he's taking grenades apart, and he puts in the thing, the fuse, and the thing, and I thought it was one. And if you don't want to count that one, then you can count the second gun making, bomb making, suit making. montage of this in the third act yeah that kicks off the third act so this this movie kind of doubled up on everything right we gotta have two inspirational speeches we gotta have no two. now here's then this is a major reason why i didn't like this movie mm -hmm. what in this movie showed us what haven't we seen before uh, you know usually when you i go to a movie it's it's that something that i've never seen before that that makes me think oh wow this is amazing I don't think I saw anything in this movie where I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. The only thing I could say would be, I mean, I, I guess the gun, the look of the guns and stuff, but I mean, that, that it might as well have been Mass Effect, you know, that we were watching. Yeah. So really, to me, it's the only thing that's kind of different would be the ghosts themselves. In fact, that they were... Not just like Scooby Dude, where it was just the guy behind the thing, you know, like it's not actual <laughs> supernatural that it was explained by science, but yeah, that's really it, right? I mean, that's what makes yeah. this movie unique is that it's it's a science experiment gone horribly wrong. It's a Frankenstein movie, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're monsters, yep, yeah, that they're, got they're, out of control, right, and killed the masters. Uh, I mean, that's kind of it, right? So, yeah. That's your, but th even then we just compared it to something else. So, <laughs> I mean, that's really all it is. Yeah. So, I mean, we've seen tanks getting beat up by creatures. We've seen, you know, guns throw guys back when you shoot them. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the, even the, the, that one scene that I really liked where um, science guy was falling backwards and the, the ghosts were all falling towards him in yeah. the big room. Oh, um, and then they did the trope of kill the mothership and then all the little soldiers all the, die. Yeah, so exactly. They, they pulled a Phantom Menace. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, you know, Avengers did it too, but fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. In I fact, mean, they did it twice, didn't they? In Avengers? No, just the first time. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. Yeah, Avengers 2, it's not if you kill Ultron, you kill the rest of them. You have to, kill oh, all, you have to blow up all of them. He is every one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, did they, what? Oh, um, the big spotlight gun that he did when he turned it into a spotlight as opposed to a camera. And then he was wearing the battery on the back and then he was holding the thing. It mm -hmm. kind of looked like a, like a steampunk version of a proton pack from Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. I started humming the tune as a. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't, I didn't know if that was like on purpose, like it was kind of an homage. Um, you know, I mean, it would have been great if he would have said something like, I'm wearing an unregistered nuclear proton pack on my back or something like that. Yeah, don't cross the streams. Yeah. Um, that actually would have been funny if they would have said Is that. Is that what you say when you're in the bathroom? <laughs> don't cross the streams. Only with other men. I've actually said that like in audio before, you know, just, just trying to be funny. Like, yeah. Can we plug this in over there? No, you can't cross the streams. Okay. They usually don't get it. Um, <laughs> uh, big, oh, I said that. Um, did they tell the command about the iron? So he obviously got on the phone and told them about the how to make the spotlight thing, right? And they mounted it on a tank, and then they drove these tanks in there to save them, right? Yeah. Which, unfortunately, those tank people, I guess, died. Uh, they got crushed they got to overran. death. Yeah. But why wouldn't... I'm with Corny on this one, right? So if we are prepared to drive tanks in there and we have the time and technology to build these things, then um, typically tanks have different types of ammunition, uh, high explosives. You have um, shot, right, which is like a shotgun version of for a tank. Well, that would have been perfect with the metal shavings. Yeah, why couldn't they have done something like that? So, like, when they fired into the building, it was a shotgun blast of all the iron shavings, and it would have actually been, a, a, like, effective. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh. You know, like, that one I kind of think is a sin a little bit. I feel like they should. Like, that guy, that guy is so good at creating stuff. Like, why wasn't that an idea? <laughs> yeah. 
Right. Like, hey, take all of your, you know, I, I can't imagine that that, I mean, maybe, maybe someone listening who was in the military is telling me, you know, is screaming at his phone right now saying it's, it's not possible. They couldn't have done it in a short amount of time. They didn't have the equipment. Army bases aren't designed to make ammunition. I, I, I don't know. It just if if you can make what they made in as short a time as they made it, then I I say anything is possible. So uh, MacGyver can make a laser out of a piece of bubblegum uh, wrapping paper and uh, sheer grit. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, no, I, he he literally took a took a camera and turned it into a projector. I mean. That doesn't work that way. I don't really no. think it does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So Unless you, you, like, completely turn on the flash for the light source, maybe? I don't know. I mean... But, yeah, it shouldn't work that way. I don't know. It's, it's whatever. It was still kind of cool, but it's fine. They're very limited. He's got to, like, swing around. I got to look at the front. got to look at the back. Gotta, you know. Um, yeah, but see, even if, the, you know, the, the second act was a horror movie. Oh yeah, right? definitely yeah. They didn't amp up like they could have as a horror movie. Mm. You know, I mean, they're trapped in a building, and uh, it was obviously easy for these things to cross the metal. You know, at some point they were like, "Oh, let's just jump on these oh. these telephone poles." Okay, so that that brings me to a thing that you mentioned earlier that I didn't think about until you mentioned it, and you yeah. said that the movie breaks its own rules, and. They broke the rule, right? So you're telling me that these things have the ability to, um, to, to, yeah, they kind of jumped, I mean, far out onto the wires and then were able to jump into the building, but they can't jump three inches over the iron. (laughs) Yeah. Like, exactly. I thought that was strange. So. Again, it only it only did served uh, story purposes. It wasn't, re, you know. Yeah, it was it was plot armor. I get plot it. armor. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Did we lose corny again? I don't know. No, no, I'm here. Okay, okay, okay. good. I'm a little nervous. Now. I'm, I'm I'm listening happily as you <laughs> rip this thing apart. Rip apart the yes. movie that I said was I actually enjoyed. <laughs> I can enjoy bad movies. I mean, I I still like uh, Star Crash. So well, that's, that's true. true. Uh, <laughs> Um, this has been a weird night of us doing that, man. <laughs> what a green! Oh, you, you two like saying the exact same things. It's actually it's kind of freaking me out. Jinx, you owe me a coke. No, oh. oh. Kane, Michael Kane, Michael Kane. Um, what you? Oh yeah, good. I I uh, did. I wrote. I uh, said that. Uh, even in bad situations, and I mean real bad, soldiers don't yell at generals. That's no. not a thing. When they all started barking at each other, like I'm like, wait, no. Um, chain of command in military is beaten into these men. Like, there's no way. But anyway, we had to show where the military guys are losing control, and here comes the nerd. And he does that thing that movies do where he figures it out, and he's got to be all nice and quiet and goes, hey, guys, I figured <laughs> it out. Guys, 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 figured it out. And then they all pay attention to him, you know. I think the best version of this was in Hunt for Red October when Alec Baldwin figures out that Ramius wants to defect and he says, son of a bitch, you son of a bitch. And then everyone like looks at him. I think that was the best way of doing it. But <laughs> I also am super biased because I love that movie. And it was on the other night. It was on AMC or something the other night. And I watched nearly all of it with my son and he loved it because, you know, submarines are cool to a four-year-old. Nice. So obviously, I covered his eyes when Baldwin shot that dude in the chest. But uh, someone say shot Marine. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, I did. Oh, and one last little funny thing about Hunt for Red October. So at Clemson, where I work now, they have a giant bell tower where you can actually go and play on like a big keyboard the bells, and you can rent time up there to go and play. And so I'll be walking by, and I can hear them from my office, and so I'll be. Outside or whatever, and you'll like during Christmas time, everyone tried to play Carol of the Bells. Well, it's not like it's a piano where it's you just you it's easy. You're literally hitting levers that are pulling ropes and chains to hit strike bells. So <laughs> um it's not exactly a smooth song, right? But everyone's playing Carol of the Bells, and then every now and then you'd hear something like, I don't know, the final countdown, right? <laughs> so 
Sorry. I know, right? <laughs> so on bells, you know, it's bum, 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 bum. You know. So anyway, <laughs> um, I'm out there the other day, like, I don't know, four or five, about a week and a half ago. Yeah, you know, four or five, ten days ago, whatever it is. And I hear this tune, and it immediately kicks into my brain, like, you know this song. And I'm like, what is this music? And and then it clicked me, it clicked just it just like a boom. And I looked over at my to my coworkers that were there, and I said, "This is the Soviet Union national anthem." <gasps> oh gosh! And she looks at me and she says, "How could you possibly know that?" And I said, "Because they sing it in Hunt for Red October." <laughs> And it was bum bum ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum. Like, like oh my god! When they're singing it, I'm like, who is playing that and why? So I don't know if it's still the Russian national anthem, but I know it was Trump, right Trump was coming to audit today. <laughs> What's <was> happening? <laughs> oh man! Oh. Heart liberals. Uh, there's a good, uh, there's a good Trump joke. Anyway, enough of that. Um. Sorry for that weird little rabbit hole, but you know it wouldn't be cheap seat reviews at a weird rabbit hole. Um, uh, science the shit out of this weapon building montage. Robot dog is straight out of Black Ops Two, which is cool. Dude just built world's largest particle sniper rifle. Yeah, okay. Uh, so here's a moral question: Is he killing those people when he pulls the plug and they die, or Aren't they already dead? Yeah, I mean, but their brain function is happening. Yeah. So is he killing them? And are we okay with that? I mean, I guess uh, he's okay yeah. with it. You know, I mean, is he's that basically pulling the plug? Yeah. I mean, I guess there's no there's no quality of life there, right? I mean, you can't put them back yeah. into a body. <laughs> yeah. How do you how do you wake up from that? Oh man, this really hurts. Yeah. Uh, good news and bad news. What's that? <laughs> uh, good news <laughs> that. Uh, no one can hit you or kill you. Uh, bad news is I'm actually going to kill you. <laughs> Have you guys seen, and I can't remember the name of the movie, and I got to get there. It's a Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, Source Code. Have you guys uh, seen no. Source Code? Mm. Oh, uh, that'll be a uh, neg- uh, negative, sir. Okay. Negative. Negative. Ten, ten. Ten, ten. <laughs> was that Rin. Was that negative? I thought negative was ten... No, I think Tin Tin's negative. Is it? I thought it was not. Oh, so I can't Hold remember. Hold on. Yeah. Now you're gonna look it up. Um, yeah. <laughs> source code was not available on Netflix. That's the one where he goes back in time or something, isn't it? A time thing. Yeah. So With basically, sort of, the, yeah, I've never seen it, but I remember like an explosion on a subway train. Yeah. So there's a there's a terrorist act on a train, right? And yeah. It has already happened, right? It's kind of like in Deja Vu. Like, it has already happened. There's nothing you can do about it. But they're able to send him into the scenario to try to figure out... And he can go anywhere he wants to in the scenario and interact with people as they would, as you could interact with them. And if the bomb goes off, he gets reset. If he gets killed, he gets reset. And his job is to find the bomb and to find the bomb maker so they can catch him in the real world. Okay. Um, so I, I bring it up from the conversation we were just having for a reason, but I'm not going to tell you why. Um, Dang it. Because you should go watch the movie. I was about to say, is it worth seeing? I think it is. I watched it with Sarah. We both thought it was pretty cool. It's a little trippy. Um, yeah, man. But I, I mean, I liked it. Uh, Corny, will you check to see if it's on Amazon streaming by chance? Sorry, what movie again? Um, Source Code. I that one might be a good one to do for the show because it's a little out there, and it's science science fictiony and um. That'd be kind of up our alley. Yeah, uh, and Megan Megan Mon- Monahan is in that movie. She She's was the three. yeah she is she was uh, Mission Impossible Three chick. Anyway, while Corny looks, <laughs> God, that movie. Um, you like a Power Ranger? Did you watch it, Sam? Did you go and watch the Perfect well, last Weapon? Week, no, I ended up not seeing it last week. I think you should watch it. Yeah, to see. Uh, that'll be a negative. Oh, man. oh, ten ten is negative. So yeah, ten ten. Okay, fine. 
it's weird that ten Although, four is, and like, they'd be so far apart. Like, wouldn't you think they'd be nearer together? One would think. I don't know, Corny. I'm yep. going to give you a ten twenty one at your twenty. <laughs> oh wait, I forget what twenty one. Call oh, twenty is location. Yeah, but twenty one was call. Oh. We had oh, to learn the way, uh, uh, the ten code at our. So I type in source. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was not important. Go please. I was gonna say, uh, you know, so I typed in tor- source code in Netflix, and you know, it's uh, unavailable to stream. So uh, titles related source code, time lapse, Mister Nobody, and uh, Nightcrawler. Bamf. Nightcrawler, yeah. He uh, <laughs> just wanted to say Bamf. Um, and then the movie ends, and I think would probably be the most normal part, the most realistic part of the whole film. And that is they're saying they're going to go dismantle it so they can figure out how to do it and do it and duplicate it themselves. Like, yep. That, you know what I'm saying? I mean, mm-hmm. I honestly expected him to find some way to blow up the whole installation. I actually figured that that was... Wouldn't they have like a nuclear bomb or something they just drop? I, well, it's Eastern Europe. I don't think you want to nuke them. But I honestly Again. figured they would find some way to... Like, once they stop the ghost, then the team comes up, and they're like, all right, well, how do we prevent this from ever happening again? We need to set charges at key locations so we can implode the, the lab without... Because it was a nuclear power plant, so you you don't want to set off a Chernobyl. So we have to find a way to... you know. But I guess that's how you get around it. Well, you can't blow up a nuclear power plant without it being nuclear, so... It could be uh, analog. Well, you're right. It is analog because it is nuclear. So um, you are right about that. Um, but that, I thought that was actually probably the most realistic part of the movie was the fact that they were like, yep, we're going to go try to re-duplicate that, that thing. I still think the guns that he built are cooler than you know, ghost fighters. I don't know. I guess sending ghost fighters into battle would be better than soldiers, but... If they can't distinguish between, actually, you know what, you know what they'd probably do, right? They would probably imprint soldiers. You know what I'm saying? They would probably have <laughs> dead soldiers, right? You know, who, yeah. whose bodies have died, but their brains still work. And then they do the thing, and then they imprint on the bosine, whatever it's called, condensate, a soldier, right, a good moral soldier, and then send him into battle. That's probably what's going to happen. Uh, tropes I wrote, can't wait for backup trope. That would be your beginning. Hey, cool new thing. Let's weaponize it trope. Uh, the fish out of water, which would be our tech trope. Two inspirational speeches and tank ex machina. <laughs> uh, age of the geek, baby. Age of the geek. Anything else? You got any other tropes you guys want to add? Uh, I mean, other than all of the military tropes, right? Yeah, I mean, you've got the hive mind. We've already talked about that. Yeah, I've uh, uh, felt like busting ghosts. Yeah. Eastern <laughs> European, um, uh, Detroit, uh, uh, Detroit. Yeah, I did love um, Detroit. D- uh, experimenting on humans. Yeah, um, that's another. Yeah, they might as well have been Hydra. Yeah. yeah. So I said Hell Hydra out loud because um, someone mentioned um, Captain America, and uh, I got a lot of really odd looks. Um, apparently, you just can't yell Hell Hydra out in the middle of uh, public. Well, just uh, since Captain America works for them, apparently, there's been rumor that uh, they're going to incorporate that in the MCU. Oh, but that's been retconned, by the way. They've already well, I know that they've already kind of fixed it because it made a lot of people mad. But you can't no get say is that you can't keep that in the MCU. Do you, do you, do you want to hear the whole story real quick? Uh, okay. Why did Evan went down? Sure. Have to. Uh, basically, um, someone tried to convince that Steve Rogers wasn't really Steve Rogers, and kind of, kind of made him a uh, double agent kind of thing. But uh, he started to actually seriously doubt that he was in fact Steve Rogers. Mm. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, comi- yeah, comics. Yay, comics. They're great. Uh, that's it. That's all I got from my notes. Ready for yeah. some of the. Of, Football. Oh, I was going to say, I was about to do trivia. I forgot to play clips. I didn't capture very many. Um, well, mostly <laughs> it was a ooh. There was a lot of that happening. You're right. Um, <laughs> um, oh, and then a couple of the 
Uh, Scrooge, you're a bad man. Yeah, people in the white uh, sheets floating everywhere would just. Uh... Uh, no, no, I'm not okay with that. People in white sheets? Yeah, it's a it's a different connotation there. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I just realized. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I, I almost want to do the line from uh, Bad Boys too. <laughs> oh damn! It's the <laughs> oh man! It's the yeah yeah. I don't even <laughs> want to say it either. Um, yeah, I mean you're right. Uh, there was a lot of that kind of thing happening. There was a little bit of this. Um, um, I don't know what's happening. My computers <laughs> I don't like you. I, I, well, it's not my computer. It's iTunes being painfully slow. This happened a little bit, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, don't want to play too much of it. I don't want to get in trouble. Um, no, 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 no. So here's here's a clip again. There wasn't a whole lot of. There was no funny in this movie. There really mm-hmm. wasn't. It was just no. no. Maybe just, that's what it was missing. Um, you know, maybe maybe the soldier that they found alive could have been kooky. Well, he was a little uh, paper. Have you seen paper? There's my Waterworld reference. Uh, but he was a little. He was weird. I mean. Literally, the only humor came from the hero, and he had these a couple. He had these little quips that he'd play, that he'd say, and I captured a couple of them. So here you go: flash freeze or boil the enemy's water supply. Now, my stapler. That, that's my stapler. Okay, sorry. Now, with this device, could have driven the enemy out. And you tried this on living things. That wasn't our intent here, initially. We'd like you to test it. Any volunteers? There you go. See, that's that's fine. There you go. Yeah, that's the stapler dude from um, Office Staples. From Staples. Yeah, that was easy. Um, I forgot what this one is because I didn't write a note for it. It's just spectral 2 underscore 2 2 underscore 17. All right. There's teenagers spray painting genocide. Our Atari at the sites of the killings. Genocide. Our Atari. It's a local myth. The ghosts of war. As nightmarish as that's the literal translation. Very poetic. Very poetic. Yeah. Yes. Uh, balls. I've worked closely with this group. Been to their facilities in Virginia. It's good to see you, Doctor Klein. Good to see you, Captain Cabrera. See, they retrofitted these trucks for us with tougher, lighter weight armor. They designed the mechanical loaders that do the heavy lifting around here, so you boys don't strain yourselves too hard. Matter of fact, Doctor Klein himself. Developed a thin weight Kevlar body stock and that literally <laughs> protects your balls. <laughs> Punched them in the balls. I don't care if you're my. <laughs> Damn the woosa, Captain. Did you just touch me in the balls? Um, sorry. He tapped. Uh, I, figured, I figured Corny would like that. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's fine. Uh, derp, derp, derp. where's my last clip? Hold on, I'm derp, there. Derp, 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 Stan. Um, well, I can, uh, what is happening? <laughs> Sorry, uh, here we go. Uh, last one. I only captured four. So, what's the plan, sir? Came here to regroup, Major. There's no plan. There you go. There's no plan. No plan. No plan. I like that. There's no backup. You are by yourself. Yep. Um. Yeah, so that's it. That's all my clips, and uh, I was trying to be clever and have <clears throat> my Aven- yeah. my Avengers yeah. clip yeah. of uh, not a great plan happen, but uh, <laughs> yeah, not a great plan didn't didn't work out that way. So <laughs> never mind. Hey, um, just uh, I was thinking about this. So you know they're they're doing the uh, the fight on the bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, and you got that big cloud in the middle. Uh, in my mind, there was a moment where I was like, I try to think of the most innocent thing right. <laughs> from my childhood. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go, sorry. Not a great plan. Oh, wait. Great plan. There you go. Sorry. Not a great Not plan. A great plan. There we go. Great plan. Uh, they did make this happen. Made the sparky go boom. There you go, so that happened. Um <laughs> I'm going to need that to be my text on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. And now for some more bad news. Ready? I found the edited version. Uh, trivia. 
Uh, there was only four pieces of trivia, and I wrote down two. Originally produced by Universal Pictures for a theatrical release, who decided to offload it instead, subsequently acquired by Netflix. So this was not an original Netflix. Mm-hmm. I guess anything they release on Netflix, they count as original. I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, Netflix produced it, and well, while technically Legendary produced it, but Netflix mm-hmm. probably... They bought the, it. They bought the rights. Yeah, and the, and the script, I guess. I mean, I mean, uh, if Universal was going to do it, and then they said, eh, we don't want to do it anymore because Ghostbusters just came out. We don't want to do a, a PG-13 aggressive Ghostbusters. DARPA stands for Defense Against a Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. It's a real place. Yep. They are responsible for the development of new weapons and technology for the United United States military. A good portion of their work developing technology was used by the United States Special Operations Command, which oversees the U.S. military special forces. Uh, examples being the Army's 75th Rangers, Army Special Forces, Navy SEALs, and Marine Corps Force Recon. That's it. That's all I wrote. That's all there was. Uh, soundtrack grade, I'd give this a meh. Meh. It's fine. I didn't. I didn't hate it. It was fine. There was some. There was some good little um, Bruckheimer-ish moments of, you know, driving kind of music. I thought it was fine. So. Certainly nothing like burr, 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 or anything like that, but <laughs> I don't know why I went to speed. That's definitely not a on Zimmer thing, but uh music by Junkie XL. Seriously. Hmm. Junkie XL. Is he a DJ? Uh, uh I don't know. He's for what is it? Sounds worth. like a DJ name. It does sound like a DJ name, but he's this old white dude. He's huh. from the Netherlands. He's I don't know. He's done such films as, um, I guess, composer. Uh, he's doing he's doing the Justice League movie, Dark Tower movie, Spectral, Ooh. Deadpool. He did Deadpool. Um, Junkie did. Yeah, Amazing Spider Man two. Wait, what? Are you sure? Amazing Spider Man two was Hans Zimmer. I know that. Maybe he was the DJ in the background, mixing it up. I'm so confused now. It says composer. All right, now I'm. It must be some some drama. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right. really confused. Yeah, so like I'm on Amazon. I'm on Amazing Spider-Man Two, and under film music, original music written by God, this is a big cast. Uh, music by Hans Zimmer, Pharrell Williams, Johnny Marr, Junkie XL, and Michael Eisner. Eisenger. Yeah, doesn't he own Disney? Or run Disney? No. Different guy. So maybe he did. Maybe he helped with like the uh the DJ kind of when they did the little dubstep here, you know, E to B T Spider bit. Maybe he helped with that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um Yeah, this is a lot of movies that he Yeah. I yeah, mean he's doing the Justice good. League. Um which uh there's a trailer for? I didn't know there was already a trailer for this movie. That's probably garbage. No, yeah. it's, it's, it's Zack Snyder is directing. Did did I no. miss this somehow? It's a three hour long movie. Of course it is. Sorry. <sighs> so he looks exactly like the kind of uh, d bag that I would assume. This junkie <laughs> goes with the XL? name Junkie XL. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. In fact, it just says music by him. It doesn't even have it like. Um, that's weird. Anyway, whatever. I'm done with this. Um, that's it. Top three. Um, top three. We decided to do ghost fighting movies where be it the hero, I guess the hero is having to fight ghosties in this movie. The ghosts happen to be science. But ghosties, none this, none the less. So, Sam, uh, sorry, Corny, didn't mean to you know, screw you guys up. Corny, your ghost movies, sir. Yes, uh, my number three. I'm going to go with uh, Ghost with Patrick Swayze, and because um, he actually fights ghost as a ghost, so that's like ghost meta. <laughs> okay, I'm with you. 
Uh, and then my number two, um, Ghostbusters, um, the original. Because after that, I don't care about anything else. Right. Because, you know, ghost. Uh, and about my number one ghost fighting movie, um, Constantine. Oh. Uh, if that, if that, that works. Uh, if not, then uh, uh, any there. of those types of movies. Hellboy, Dylan Dog. Uh, but that branch of... of, of I'm trying Extra to think. dimensional things. Yeah, but they're not ghosts, right? I mean, in Constantine, they're demons, right? Demon, uh, I don't know. I, I, so that was kind of my question. Like, demon <laughs> slash ghost, is that, is, is that a... I think it'd have to be a ghost. Okay, so if I can't use that, then I'm going to use... Uh... Oh, shit. Ghostbusters 2? I have to come up with a third one. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll do that <laughs> No, actually, I was going to say, hey, if... Uh... If we just use the term ghost, then uh, I'd like to use uh, Kevin James in the international sense. Oh, the ghost. <laughs> nice! I love it. <laughs> uh, ghost in the <laughs> darkness. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm sure. Um, Sam. All right. I've got um, two honorable mentions of Ghostbusters 2 and uh, Scooby Dooby Doo. Okay, sure. They fight ghosts and they're not real. Yep. Yeah. My number three is uh, Return of the King. Oh, man. That was mine. That was what yep. I thought was going to be my clever one. My number two is The Frighteners. Right. And of course, Ghostbusters has to be number one. Okay. So you yep. basically have my list. Um, I didn't put <laughs> Ghostbusters. I thought it was too obvious. Yeah. Um, so my number. I, I don't care. My number one was well, fine. Uh, my number one was The Frighteners. Number two, I just wrote Lord of the Rings. Because <laughs> not even just that the ghost, the dead ghost army, I technically the Nazgul are ghosts. Nazgul, yeah, that's true too. I so didn't think of that. I just thought of all of them. And then my stretch. Il, uh, Sauron is uh, pretty much a ghost. Um, Yeah, I I finished my uh, Mordor game. Holy crap, that game was fun. I know it. I can't. Um, I, I've got to get to Chad's house to play more. It's so fun. But the, the the game actually ex- basically leads up right up to Lord of the Rings. So you are the reason why Sauron is basically just a giant flaming eye. Interesting. It's because Give me the of, damn ring. Yeah, it's because of your actions. It's actually kind of cool. So my third movie was my stretch because I couldn't think of one before the episode started, and I was racking my brain while we were shoot, or shooting, while we were recording. So the only one I could come up with was The Matrix Returns with the two white suited oh, yeah. people that okay, turned I'll ghostish. That. The viruses, basically. Uh, yeah, I couldn't think of anything else. So there you go. If you don't like it, fine. I'll still keep Well, if, if, if that is the case and we're talking about things that become intangible, <laughs> okay, uh, then I would like to throw in an uh, uh, honorable mention to uh, Scott Pilgrim in the... <laughs> Uh, fight scene um, between number five and six. You're turning into Sam with this, you know. That, right? <laughs> I actually hey, thought of. Um, actually, I just can't realize. I forgot. I can't believe I didn't think of this. And this is a way better movie than The Matrix. So I'm going to scratch The Matrix and say Beetlejuice. Oh, how did I not think of Beetlejuice? Yeah, That's man. Too. <laughs> so that movie starring Alan uh, Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis and um, uh, directed by that Tim Burton. Yeah, that's a great movie. Um, there you go. That was fun. Uh, ooh, I got something. Uh, we actually have an email tonight. Oh my uh, gosh! Well, <laughs> and is, I, is it is it a sale ad? No, I I say well because it's it's Alan, which of oh, course God. we appreciate. But Alan's email <laughs> starts with. <laughs> Hey guys, sending this email so Sean doesn't have to do a GoDaddy plug without getting paid. Hope you guys are doing well. The show continues to be a favorite of mine weekly. Still hoping to see you guys do with honors. Again, it's not streaming. It's it's not streaming. Uh, you, it's on our list. It just if it ever gets to be streaming, mm-hmm. uh, we'll do it uh, with Joe Pesci and Toy <laughs> Soldiers with Sean Astin. I love Toy Soldiers. Uh, love the show, Sean. I am surprised you don't own several movies I would have thought you would own. Thought you to own. Sam, keep hounding the guys. Corn hounding. Ooh, I hound. Uh, 
<laughs> Corny, I love the Stallone and the Connery. Andrew, thanks for being a true voicer of reason on past and future DC films, as well oh, as films in general, as you guys are great. He also has the flu. That's obviously God punishing him. <laughs> right, for, <laughs> for siding with... Uh... <laughs> he has been smote. Oh, I like that. God has smote him. I like this idea. Oh, smite me, almighty smiter. That's right. So Not much for blasphemy, but that was pretty funny. Um, uh, thank you, Alan, for the email. You, of course, can send your emails to cheapseatreviews at gmail.com. We will read them on air, and clearly we will do your movie, because we did this movie. We did uh, Spectral. So um, I just realized that what our next movie is. Yes. And um, we might need to take a second and have a conversation. So before we do that, we're going to do our out of 10 for this movie, um, Spectral. So... Um, uh, Andrew gave his out of 10 and I gotta find it real quick hold on he did not particularly like this movie uh-huh. and he referred to it as he was gonna give it 5 easy, ridiculously easy to build proton packs out of 10 Okay. so he's just gonna give it a straight 5 so uh, Corny uh, I'm actually gonna be just a little bit meaner than that uh, visually, I mean, you're right. I mean, it was actually a really visually pleasing movie, but that that's it. Um, I'm, I'm not not pleased. Uh, so I don't know. I'm gonna four uh, four point two. Okay. Great Sam. balls of fire out of ten. Just want to say balls, Sam. Oh, okay. Um, I'm probably I, I visually it's not a whole lot of stuff that I haven't seen before. Um, so I'm going to give it a 4.93 uh, spinal apparitions out of 10. All right. <laughs> Sean? Hello? Sorry, I'm uh, coughing. Um, Not okay. No, I know. Uh, I apologize. Uh, I'm going to give this a... I liked it a little bit better than you guys. Uh, I thought it was fine. It was paint by the numbers. It was average. It was safe. You know, I mean, we we talked about, you know, Interstellar. There were some things about Interstellar I didn't like, but it was, um, it was, um, not, it was, it was groundbreaking. It was daring, you know, um, but this one was pretty safe. So anyway, as, um. So with that, as I keep, I'm, as I'm stalling here, uh, as I'm typing <laughs> messages to I, Sam. I think we need to change for next week. Yeah. So um, uh, I, I will say that I'm going to give this a, I'm going to give it a 6.2 particle sniper weapons out of 10. So there you go. That's it. <laughs> yeah. um, is that streaming? Do not know. <laughs> um, I think well, it's on Amazon. Um, I think it is on Amazon. Hold on. You got you, you stall while I look. All right, cool. So uh, as as I stall to let you know what our next week's movie is going to be, it was supposed to be Black Hawk Down, and um, because this movie is so similar to that movie, we're going to kind of shake it up. So we're going to. It's see. on Amazon. So we are now doing. Um, <laughs> Uh, we are now going to do Swiss Army Man, which is that kind of weird um, Harry Potter Harry Potter movie thing. And I heard it was really kind of funny and weird. And didn't uh, somebody requested this? Right? Didn't? Yeah. And, uh, Andrew had a friend, a coworker that requested this. I'm pretty sure it was Andrew. He, he's making it up. I'm pretty sure it was just him. Oh, he's, well, he wanted to watch. Um... I'm okay with that because I, I I haven't seen this yet, and I've been wanting to. I've I've heard everything from this is the best movie people have ever seen to I walked out of it. Yeah. Don't you like movies like that? I guess so. people who walked out were expecting to see, like, you know, wands and stuff, you know. I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what you expect from a movie called Swiss Army Man. Um, this, this MacGyver. You expect MacGyver. The whole movie should have been a MacGyver movie. I mean, even in the... Yeah, look, yeah in, the, in the customer reviews on Amazon, 
thirty-seven percent are the five are five star. Twenty-six percent is one star. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. So it's yeah, interesting. So interesting. Okay. So um, yeah. So that's next week. So Swiss Army Man next week. It's rated R, not for the kids. So just because it's got Daniel Radcliffe doesn't mean that it's a, a good movie to watch for the the children. So anyway, the children's the children. That's what I would say. Uh, so that's next week. Um, so cool. That was fun. Um, and I'm gonna do the thing where I play the um, clip. It was a different time. There you go. So oh, God rest his soul. That's right. I uh, got punched in the face by a specter or a spectral whatever. Uh, that's gonna do it for us. Thank you guys so much for listening to the show. Um, <clears throat> if you um, are listening and um, you know like what we do, then of course you may uh, leave us reviews on iTunes or Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, whatever. Um, leave us reviews. It's how other people can find us. And then the more people to listen, the more people listen. And that's good because um, we want people to listen. And uh, visit our website, CheapSeatReviews.com. Uh, don't forget, we have a GoFundMe account still. GoFundMe.com slash Cheap Seat Reviews. Help us pay for the show. Um, <clears throat> that that first uh, uh, year that you guys help pay for, kind of money is about to run out. So need another push to uh, help keep the show going for another year. Um, so go there. Cheap seat, uh, GoFundMe.com slash Cheap Seat Reviews would be uh, fantastic if you can donate even just a few bucks. Uh, like us on Facebook, Facebook Facebook.com slash Cheap Seat Reviews. Follow us on Twitter at Cheap Seat Cast. And, of course, your emails to CheapSeatReviews at gmail.com so Alan doesn't have to. Um, not that we don't appreciate it, but, you know, we you know send us your emails because, you know, you should. If Alan did, then you should. Um, and that's going to do it for us. For, uh, for uh, On behalf of um, Corny, Sam, Andrew, who we hope feels better and should return next week, this is Sean saying thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week.